educating investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the June 29th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. We'd love to hear from you at 877-927-6648. If you can't call in, we've got you covered there, too. You can always let those fingers do the walking. Send me an email. Send it to Steve at TFN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. And, of course, in our Tiger's Den. Well, any in every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger. Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to La Show. Right now, we got a bit of a mixed bag out here. It's the Dow that's trading to the upside, the Dow and the spot volatilics. Dow's up 43, spot volatilics is up 60 cents, which is trading about its 50 day exponential moving average. The SP's off 10, three tenths percent. NASDAQ 100, about two tenths or 18 points. Russell, one and six tenths or 28 points. Semi's down two and six tenths or 70 points. Trading's off about 1%, 125 points. Gold's trading out at 1818, still above support, which is 1813. Silver's trading out at uh, 2075. Lights Recruit is back 41 pennies, trading at 1137. Natural gas off 8 cents, 649 is the print there. 30 Treasuries up 1 point and 13 30 seconds. She's trading at 136.18. Dollar wise, the leaders in the clubhouse are IDEX Laboratories up 11 bucks, that's 3%. Regenerate Pharmaceuticals up 9 bucks and change, or 2%. Uh, Elevance Health is up 9 bucks, 2%. O'Reilly Automotive. About 870 or one and three tenths percent. Our Genix SE is up nine bucks and two and a half percent. To the downside, it's booking holdings of uh, 42 bucks. Equinix off 27, that's four percent. Tesla 24 bucks, that's nearly three and a half percent. Solar Edge is down 17 or six percent. Google off 16, seven tenths of a percent out there. So, what are the markets doing? Great question. Let's tell let me tell you what they're let's let's just kind of review signals as we see it at this moment. So the first signal, I'm going to start with the uh, bigger picture first. So to do that, well, let's do this. I'll do the bigger picture in a couple different ways. First, we'll take a look at the weekly time frame charts. These are the weekly time frame charts for the equity future contracts. Three of the four confirmed last week, confirmed Rhodes momentum indicator bottom signals. How do they do that? They did that when they generated a bullish reversal candle, bull sash candles out there. And that's after uh, generating that Rhodes momentum indicator signal trigger. So we've got a solid bottom that's in place. That bottom does not get negated until price closes below the lows. It's not the low of that bull sash candle. It's the week before. So in the case of the ES Mini, it's a close below uh, 3639 that then says that that pattern has failed. So that's on the weekly time frame chart. If we take a look at the daily time frame chart, I don't want to do that. Oh, I know how I'll do that. Let's get this uh, back up on our screen out here. What, what's occurred in the daily time frames, so that I can pull it up, equity futures, probably right here. There we go. Now, I don't show the patterns. I mean, I can draw them in right now. And I'll just draw it in real quickly here for the ES Mini. What these did, the daily time frame, that is what I'm referring to, they confirmed by the D-point patterns. 
So here's the A to B equals CD pattern for the ES Mini that we're putting in. It made a little bit over 1 to 1.272, A to B equals CD. It forms that bottom and it completes that or confirms that bottom on June the 21st. Why does it confirm that bottom? I'm going to get rid of the A to B equals CD because it was a three river morning star pattern, bullish pattern out there. Now, price is back inside its daily profile. And that's problematic. So that's the first thing that's a problem. But if we go take a look at the other daily equity future contracts, I want to show you these here momentarily. It's saying, I'm not sure if it's a problem or not just yet. And what I mean by that is price is above the oscillator and change line for three of the four. That's the ES, the NQ, and the ADAO. And that may be just simply a level of support out here. And so we're going to pay attention to the Russell 2000. That's one of the weak links today. The semis are the second weak link. But the Russell's a weak link. And you can see that price has pulled back and it's tested that level, that level being the oscillator and change line. Now, it doesn't matter where we're trading at 111. It just matters where this closes at 5 p.m. this evening. But if, in fact, that level holds, it's a it suggests a possibility that what we're seeing is the B to C leg of an A to B equals C to the upside. Now, can't make that, not guaranteeing that. But what I am sharing with you, you've got nice confirmed weekly bottoms out here, and you've got nice confirmed daily bottoms out here. And even though price is pulling back, there are no key levels of support on the daily or the weekly time frame that have failed. And why is this important out here? Why is those weekly? Why does Stevie start with the weekly Rhodes-Mintum indicator signals out there? And that's a great question. And we're going to answer that for you. I'm just looking for the actual tab. There we go. So let's, let's take this is a weekly time frame chart. Now, this is my historical file. It goes back to 1896 out here. And this is on the weekly time frame. Now, I don't have the – I just have this as of uh, February the 11th. So I haven't updated. This is uh, something I have to manually do. But what I do have on this chart that you can take a look at, here are the last two. So this is the third – Rhodes-Mintum indicator bottom on the daily time on the weekly time frame for the Adao. I guess I didn't show you the. Uh, oh, I don't even have that post. Oh, uh, so I'll, I'll show you right now because I'm actually on the wrong screen. So this works out perfect uh, for me. Here's the weekly time frame for the cash indices. So I want to make sure that I'm just staying consistent with you so that you can follow along. So here's the Dow, the S and P, and the Nasdaq. The top, upper, the upper, the upper row out here, the first three, and you can see that each of those. So it wasn't just the equity future contracts that formed the roads momentum indicator bottom. It is these cash indices that did the same. So now we can go back, and we can take a look at the um, Dow historical. Uh, let me uh, take that since I'll, I'll stay on that same page. So give me a moment here. Let me pull this back this way. I'm going to make sure that. Uh, where are we? Okay, good. So now here is the, uh, this is the third Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom on a weekly base that has formed since the 2009 lows. By the way, on a weekly basis, that's what formed the bottom. That's one of the patterns. There were a couple patterns that formed on there, but this is one of the patterns out here. And you can see that uh, so far this year, uh, so far since 2009, they've made some really solid bottoms out here. Now let's pull this back further. That does not mean that they don't fail, but failure of any kind of Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom or buy the D point pattern means you have to close below support and support would be the support of that bullish bull sash candle or the low of that pattern. Here in the 2007-2009 move, there was a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom that formed that was confirmed on the week of December the 5th out there. But that pattern eventually failed. We may have that going on this time, but let's uh, we'll come back to this break. We'll go back historically so that you can understand that maybe that's not the case. We'll be right back. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner 
Ready Development Stage Gold Project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at the, uh, at the uh, Dow at this moment here. We're taking a look at my historical chart. Now, I'm not going to take us all the way back to 1896. I'll take us back pretty far, though. Uh, here, and we're looking at the Rhodes Mintum Indicator bottom patterns. Um, the reason we're looking at that is because that's what formed last week for the Dow, the S&P, and the NASDAQ 100. Now, when you see these black diagonal signals out there, that doesn't mean that you have a confirmed pattern. The way that a pattern or the way that Stevie confirms patterns out here is I wait for the cavalry. And what that means is I wait for, in the case of a bottom, I wait for a bullish reversal candle. For a top, a bearish reversal candle. So here's the one that formed. This is back in the uh, 2002 time frame. So that was the uh, off of the 2000 top out there. Again, that bottom formed with a bull sash candle, Rose momentum indicator bottom. Let's continue to pull this back further. Now I'm in the weekly time frame out here, and uh, you'll see that we don't get these patterns that often. The one, the, the one, the next one, the next one to the uh, formed in August of 1982. August of 1982, uh, that we had uh, nice Rhodes momentum indicator bottoms form. What's the one that was before that? The one that was before that takes us back into March of 1978. The one before that takes us back into December of 1974. Um, here is a pattern that did end up failing, and this is the one from uh, May, January of 1970. Now, I say it failed. I mean, we got a little bit more of a rally, more than just a one-week rally out there. This was more like a, a couple-month rally before price gave it up. If we take a look at the Rhodes Mentum Indicator signal that confirmed back in 1966 in October, that led to a healthy rally. This pattern out here never could – well, I take this back. There's a pattern, the Rhodes Mentum Indicator pattern, that confirmed back in 1966. This was in July of 1966. And what price did was it got up, which – should always do when you form a bottom, get up to that red oscillator or get up to the oscillator and change line. It doesn't have to be red. It could be green out here. And and that's what is a little bit concerning about the equity future contract that we looked at because that has the same pattern. The cash indice does not just yet. But just simply what I'm sharing with you is this pattern 
Rosemont Dominicator signal, 1958. Here's a nice solid bottom. Again, you're waiting for that bullish reversal candle to uh, confirm out here. Here's another one that formed, almost similar to maybe what the markets might be looking like this time around. This is 1946. When I say this time around, because we are in the seasonal, uh, we are in the seasonal uh, midterm election cycle. Now, uh, 1946 was actually a midterm seasonal cycle pattern. Um, so, so this is something to kind of keep in mind that we might be really in this kind of a uh, range here, at least through the election time period. Um, so that that takes us through. We don't have to. I don't think we have to belabor the point any anymore. You can see that the patterns that are on the on a weekly basis that form that Rosemont Dominicator signal are most certainly worth paying attention to. Now. I mentioned the seasonal cycle. So here is the seasonal cycle. This is for the midterms. The reason why I was able to tell you off my off the top of my head that 1946 was a, a midterm election was because I was able to go back to this and uh, and check that out. So only the years that are checked off. So right here is 1946. Um, and here is the uh, – I can just uh, – let me do this here. Make it a little bit easier. So the red vertical line – is where we're at. So what I want you to notice is that a bottom typically forms in June, whether it's during the midterm cycle or not. And that's why those daily, last week's daily confirmed roads momentum indicator signals followed up by the weekly is really suggestive to you and I that we should see price move higher into the middle of uh, July. And then that kind of that choppy period sideways looks very much like the 1946 pattern that we had looked at there. So those are the reasons to not not just to get overly bearish out here, but that concern, the one concern that I do have, and again, it's, oops, oh, I got to just switch charts here, uh, switch uh, pallets. That's not it. Sorry about that. It was a different tab. Give me a moment to pull this up. And here are the weekly time frame charts. So the weekly time frame charts for the for the NQ, that's your upper right, and the ES and the Russell 2000, lower right, each of those have tested and rejected those red oscillator and change lines. That is not the case for the ES mini. That is not the case for the uh, Dow equity future contract. And it's not the case for the S&P or the uh, Dow cash indice out there. So... What are the troubles that we have? What what are the what are the uh, what are the reasons why this pattern could fail? Well, one of those reasons, or a couple of those reasons, could be the following. The first reason would be that spot volatility index, which yesterday did close above the top of it, or did close above its 50-day exponential moving average. That is the blue line. Let me make sure I'm on the right screen here. That's the blue line on the uh, top panel of the screen that we're looking at. And you can see that today price is trading above it as well, it being 2805, price is trading right now at 2903. As long as that condition remains out there, that can be a real problem for the um, uh, for the S&P 500. And here is the S&P 500 chart. Again, the green boxes uh, are representing periods where the spot politics is below the 50-day expensive moving average. Doesn't matter whether what the number on the print is. And the uh, yellow boxes or rectangles, those are when the uh, spot politics is trading above its 50-day expensive moving average. Another issue that's popped up today, but it's just popped up at this moment, and we really need to see what it looks like at the end of the day. So when we do have a spot volatility index that is above its 50-day expense moving average, what I have found in my studies is if the advanced decline oscillator for the New York Stock Exchange is not below the zero threshold level, the moves lower are somewhat tepid. Well, as we speak right now at 124 in the afternoon, that is not the current pattern. We now have the advanced decline oscillator at a minus 24 reading. That is below the zero threshold level. You really need two consecutive sessions below that to confirm that. Uh, but this is problematic, and that's why it looks to me like what the markets want to do is pull back on a daily basis and test those red oscillator and change lines. So let's go back and take a look at those. We're going to look at those here for the equity future contract. So now, if you're asking me where is it that the ES mini is likely to head to, not that it can't take it out, but that target is about 37.79. I say about because that number is going to move up and down by a couple points or two as price adjusts. In the case of the NQ, that level is 11.521 or thereabouts. Inside of the Dow, it's at 36.66. Now, the Russell 2000 right now is trading just below uh, the oscillator and change line. The oscillator and change line read is at 17.10. Price is trading at 17.06. A red oscillator and change line tells us that we have a price oscillator that is below zero. 
When price is below a red oscillator change line, it tells us we have a falling price oscillator below zero. Those are bearish conditions. We don't have those conditions as we speak just yet, uh, but if price did close below those, then what we would see is the ES mini would target its profile levels of support, and that's between 36.89 and 37.40. In the case of the NQ, it's at 11.396. In the case of the Dow, it's 29.982 to 33.25. And for the Russell 2000, it would be 16.67. That would be the number. So let's go take a quick peek here and take a look at the... Um, Screen my on. Okay, let's go take a look at the uh, ES mini uh, before we go to a breakout here. That's up on our screen right now. So what we're looking for here from an intraday standpoint, do we see any kind of bottom signal side? The answer is below The answer is do. So the ES mini has confirmed the Roachman indicator bottom pattern. It did that. And we came on there at 1 o'clock. We have that little bullish piercing candle out here. Now, price would have a pulse 38.37. Steve Rhodes with TFN. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So let's go back to the uh, to the ES mini charts here. Give me a moment. We'll pull those up on the screen. So as we were going to break, we were taking a look at the 30-minute time frame chart. 30-minute time frame chart, top of the Rhodes Mintum indicator top. This was back at about 4.30 in the morning. Really, it was 5 o'clock when it topped. That's when it confirmed that Three River Evening Star candle formation. Here we had a Rhodes Mintum indicator signal that was uh, triggered at 10 o'clock this morning. And that low has not been taken out, and we got that little bullish piercing candle that formed at 1 o'clock this afternoon. So that is a confirmed Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. Now, 
if there's going to be any kind of rally that has any kind of meaning, what we need to see is price close above the top of its profile. And it's 130, and guess what? Right at 130, we just got a brand new profile. So the number is going to be fresh, and it's going to stick around for a while or should stick around for a while, likely for several hours the rest of the day, I would say. And so the levels of support to be watching here, let's say you were long or short, these are the levels that you want to be watching. To the downside, I'll give you that moment, uh, that is at 38.05. That's your support level. Resistance, 38.32. The center of the box at 34, 38.16. So again, those number you got... 38.05, 38.16, and 38.32. If price closes above 38.32, the top of a profile, that's something that has not occurred since about um, June 28th. Today's the 29th, and that happened at about 10 o'clock in the morning out there. So that's what the NQ would need to do to say, okay, maybe there's something to this Rhodes Mintum Indicator bottom pattern. Otherwise, Inside the ES Mini, it's really suggesting that price wants to get down to that 3780-ish type area, the daily oscillator and change line. So that's the overview of the markets. Uh, take a look at longer term, the daily time frame, the different patterns that are out there. I hope that helped you to understand what the markets are communicating to us. And again, uh, just to summarize it, right now the signals are that price should pull back, test those red oscillator change lines on the daily time frame out there, and then give us the next signal. Let's go to some questions that have come in. The first question coming in from HD. HD wants to take a look at the BP. If both... Uh, he's, he's, BP and XEL he says I have both and looking to hold for just a bit longer. So we take a look at the BP out here. Again, I think we discussed this yesterday. It's trading with inside a consolidation. We take a look at the weekly time frame chart. Maybe it wasn't yesterday. Maybe it was some other time. But the uh, price has hit the bottom of the consolidation. Um, that would suggest, and that held. You could didn't bust it out. That price is going to go target the 3087 level. If we take a look at the daily time frame chart, you've got a TD9 count bottom. But here is the bummer. And that bummer is that price got up to that red oscillator and change line, tested it yesterday, tested it again this morning or today. Price is trading below that level. That's a suggestion that BP should go test the 2832 level. If it closes below that, it'll go test that swing point from June the 23rd out there. But right now, I would say in the case of BP, it wants to pull back, and that pullback should find support at 2832. The next instrument you want to take a look at is XEL. This will take about 10 seconds to uh, populate. So uh, while that is going on, I'm going to put XEL on my other charts out here, just to see if I can get a, a quick uh, head start on this. So when we take a look at XL Energy, price is trading above the top of the daily, inside the weekly, and inside the monthly profile out there. So the daily time frame, I'm just going to go to the very right-hand chart out here, shows a nice TD9 count bottom. Price is well above the top of its weekly daily profile. Price is above its red oscillator and change line. You're in bar number five. This suggests to you and I, HD, that price should continue to move higher. Now, its eventual target, I'm not saying it'll get up there, but its target right now on a daily basis is 75.84. That's the TD9 count breakdown level. At least that's one of the targets. If I look at the uh, monthly time frame chart, monthly time frame is going to generate, it appears, a Rhodes indicator top but it hasn't broken any levels of support. The uh, weekly formed what? It's formed a sell the D point pattern and price pulled back to its second breakout level, which was 63.50. The price is above the bottom, it's regained the bottom of its weekly profile. That's this week that it's done that. It's only Wednesday, but I'm assuming that price, will, uh, well, under the assumption that price stays above 68.79, then this says the price target is 71.89. So that, in summary, is where XLE is headed to because the daily is bullish out there. It's got that nice bottom. There's no resistance until you get to 75.84, but we switch over to the weekly, and we see the potential resistance at 71.89. So, HD, I hope that helps you out with regard to those two instruments. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Ray, this is Ray, I believe, in Sarasota. And the only reason I know that is because he wants to take a look at Nordic American tankers. And my recollection from phone calls that we've had, this is a core holding uh, inside his portfolio, whether it is or it isn't, doesn't really matter. It says, can you identify support or resistance for me for the following two stocks? So Nordic American Tankers, it's populating right now. And uh, the week, the monthly time frame shows that price is tested so far this month. Uh, its level of support, which would be 191. If price were to close below that, Ray, then your next level of support is 159. You asked for resistance as well. Resistance is 276 for the monthly time frame. 
on the weekly chart out here. Well, turns out that we don't really have profile support because price is below the bottom of that level, and that's at 222. Last week and this week, price tried to get inside there. The week's not over, obviously, this week. But if price closed below 222, this would suggest that we may see a move lower as well. Um, so that's coming from the weekly chart. Yeah, no support other than the support would be the lows, the lows from back in uh, March out here, the uh, February, that is. The February lows would be the support level. The daily time frame, uh, shows support at 206. That's the red oscillator and change line. If price were to close below that ray, 197 would be the number. To the upside, it's 223. And if price can close above 223 for two consecutive sessions, then the upside potential is uh, $2.89. That's the TD9 count breakdown level out there. So that's for Nordic American tankers. Ray also wants to take a look at ticker symbol VERU. Make sure I type that in. I did not type that in correctly. VERU. If I type it in correctly, we can usually keep these to about 10 seconds or so. And if I don't, well, then it's a 20 to 30 second kind of a deal. So now let's wait for VE. What is VERU? VERU is uh, VRU Inc. Well, there you go. So with regard to support, the monthly profile has support at 566, resistance at 1750. There's another level of support on a monthly basis. That's its oscillator and change line rate, and that is 952. The weekly time frame has support at 1064, bottom of the profile, resistance at 1641. Odds favor that price is going to go test the 1064 level because price is below its oscillator and change line for a weekly time frame. The daily chart is uh, taking on a swing point. Ray, that swing point is from June 1st, and that volume was 6.2 million. So far today, you're at 3 million shares out there. Um, so you've got really a consolidation pattern to a certain extent that is going on. That consolidation pattern is going to look like this. Let's go draw that in. The reason we want to do that is because this could help uh, Ray understand uh, where price might head to if price breaks through the consolidation. So it's a small consolidation. The tops are very easily definable. It goes like this. And the bottom is probably like about right here. So, I mean, we're, we're actually, yeah. I'm just looking. It, it almost looks more like, wait a moment here. That would really be the better spot. That's really the consolidation pattern. So as we speak right now on a daily basis out here, Ray, price is breaking through that level. That level, by the way, so what I'm using here as the low... You know, you could use either 1146 or you could use 1166. And I've got 1166. The nice thing about the consolidation pattern out here, Ray, is that once you break through it, you usually make a measured move equal to or greater than consolidation. That would suggest that price wants to go retarget the May 12th low. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. 
Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back. Now, Ray, uh, we, we're still back on uh, VRU. V-E-R-U is a ticker symbol out there. Uh, and that is this, that uh, the other possibility, and, and perhaps a more likely possibility, is that Nordic American Tankers is pulling back. And so there's a big breakout. That breakout was a gap to the upside. That was on May 13th. The volume on that gap to the upside raise, you probably know, 109 million shares. Today, you're pulling back into that area so far with 3 million shares. So much lighter volume. Now, price will either target 1041 or 923, either the bottom of the gap, that's a 1041, or the top of the gap, that's at 923 out there. So it may not fulfill that consolidation pattern that Stevie drew in there for you. So I'd be looking for, but price is pulling, you know, it's below support. That's the bottom of the profiles out there. That's always a dangerous thing. But price likely going to pull back to either 1041 or 923 to um, back to it in essence to its breakout and it doesn't mean that it can't pull back the low of May 12th out there and that May 12th low is at 679 that would get you close to fulfilling that consolidation breakout so Ray thanks so much for taking the time to write in I hope that helps you out and uh, we'll look forward to speaking to you again let's go to our next question this one coming in from Mike over in uh, Europe and Mike is uh, asking about Apple and Microsoft uh, let's change screens here give me a moment Get over to the white background screen, and let's read Mike's question. Mike's question goes like this. Based on the chart you showed on Monday the 27th, Apple pulled back to just above the daily top of the TAS profile out there. So uh, if we take a look at the daily time frame, you're on the very right-hand chart out here, and you can see the top of the profile is 136.97. Today's low so far has been 136.97. 67. So yes, absolutely. Price has tested a key level of support. The reason why the top of the profile here is a key level of support is because oftentimes old resistance, which is what it was, can become support, especially when price is above it for more than two candle sessions, which is what we have here. So it's possible that that support, and that could be setting up an A to B equals CD to the upside. Um, you put Microsoft also pulled back above its daily oscillator and change line. So we can take a look at that next. I think Apple and Microsoft are canaries in the coal mine. Please look at Apple. And we are. So in the case of Apple, you have a buy the D point pattern. That buy the D point pattern confirmed out here with this gap to the upside on June 21st. Then if we take a look at Apple, it also confirmed on a weekly basis a TD9 count bottom. What that should do in the case of Apple, Mike, is when you form a bottom on, a, on any time frame, Price should make its way to the oscillator and change line. The weekly oscillator and change line is at 148 and change out there. That is likely where price is headed to. Um, I'm not saying that there's an A to B equals C to the upside inside of Apple. I can't say that until price were to take out the B point or the C, yeah, the B point of the A to B equals C D pattern. That, in essence, is bar that's labeled as bar number three out there. 
And that volume on that candle session, should price get up there? Well, I don't know what it is. Uh, I'll let you know in a minute. Give me a moment here. The volume on that candle session, which candle? Oh, that uh, swing point from uh, June the 27th is 70 million shares. So today, so far, we've done 40 million shares, and it's uh, it's not too far away from actually testing that swing point. So the low of that swing is 140.97. The high today is 140.67, 30 cents out there. So yeah, we've rejected support, or we've t we've we've held support out there. But if price does trade up and it does tag that swing point with less than 70 million shares, then we really are just like like in a small consolidating pattern between support and resistance out there. Um, and that's between 136.97 and perhaps the uh, 140.97 area. But for all intents and purposes, what Apple should do is move higher, especially if 136.97 does hold out there. So let's put up the charts for Microsoft. So, Mike, uh, I hope that that helps you out. And uh, thanks again for uh, listening in. It's now, what, about uh, 7.46 in the evening, I believe. Maybe it's 6.46 in the evening. I might have my daylight savings time hours screwed up here. But as we take a look at the charts here from Microsoft, yesterday price closed below the top of that profile out there, so it kind of cracked uh, the armor. But today, so far, price is back above that level. That level, the top of, oh, there's a brand new profile. Oh, I take that back. Hold on a minute here. Um, brand new profile forming today, Mike. And so we're going to have some new levels. So the new level of support is at 245.55. The new level of resistance is at 268.30. And the center of that profile is at, oh, the center, we don't see a profile center, do we? You know why? Because the center is down at support or the bottom of the profile at 245.55. So that should be a real strong support level. Price is uh, pushing up. So the swing point that it's also going to deal with is the one that's labeled bar number six. So bar number six has volume of, uh, and I'm looking off a different, uh, different uh, screen out here, Volume of 24 million shares. You're pushing higher today, so to speak, with 11 million shares. But you want to watch that low of 263.28. If that gets tagged today and it uh, rejects it, means close back below with lighter volume. You know, then we've then we've got some problems. Or again, kind of like Apple, somewhat of a small trading range out there. However, its support level is all the way down to 245. You do have a potential support of that red oscillator and change line of the 254 area. Microsoft on a weekly basis, though, real clear. It's got a nice TD9 count bottom. Here is the potential trouble for Microsoft. And that's this, Mike, is that you have the TD9 count bottom. Last week, price gets up close to the red oscillator and change line. This week, price gets up there and rejects that level. So on a weekly basis, even though we've got a bottom, that was a TD9 count bottom. That was a seventh wave bottom. We have um, a uh, price oscillator that is falling below zero. Those are bearish conditions. So what I'll say right now is conditions are neutral. And they'll remain neutral unless price closes below the low of its TD9 count pattern. That low is from June 17th, and that was at 241.51. The real key level resistance that Microsoft must take out in order to get on its merry ways is that 267.40 level, but that will likely change as price moves up and down. So, Mike, thank you so much for taking the time to write in. That's Mike, formerly of Sarasota, and uh, uh, we'll look forward to uh, chatting with you again. So I've got no other questions that I know of. Let me just take, oh, I take that back. There's one here from Dennis G. And Dennis G says, what's our outlook for Apple? Dennis G in West Palm Beach. So Dennis, I think I really already covered that. So I, I'm, I'm hoping you caught that uh, because we did that just before we took a look at uh, Microsoft. So thanks for the question there. Um, and at this stage here, again, just to summarize, Apple held support the top of its daily profile. I'm not showing Apple on any screen out there. And uh, now price is going to head higher, and it's going to go test or it's going to go target a swing point. I think Apple might be targeting a swing point from the uh, June 20. Well, let me tell you exactly. APL. I think it was June 21st, but uh, it was June 24th. So that's a swing point that it's going to go target. If it can generate more than 70 million shares and uh, close above 143.49, then you'd have an A to B equals CD to the upside. We do not have that. That is not the pattern that Steve B is calling out here. But because we have the uh, support level holding the uh, top of its daily profile, that's what says this is a real possibility. Now, if it did form an A to B equals CD to the upside, Dennis, the uh, price target, the one-to-one, -one, 
would be in the 151 level. And 151 would take you back to a prior swing point, which is from June the 1st. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be back in just a few. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. TFNN has just launched their July 4th Tiger Dollar Sale. For one week only, we've doubled all the bonuses, where you can now get up to 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase. Tiger Dollars are good on all TFNN newsletters, webinars, and trading services, and they never expire. For all the details and to get your Tiger Dollars before the sale ends Tuesday, July 5th, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's try to wrap up uh, what we just discussed during this last 50 uh, minutes or so out there. And that's this. First, we've got confirmed bottoms. They're still in place out there for the daily and the weekly time frame for the S&P, the NASDAQ 100, the uh, Dow, the uh, Russell 2000. So that's the first thing. That does not mean that price can't pull back and move lower out there. It just means that we've got confirmed bottoms. Those bottoms have not failed as we speak just yet. That's the first thing. The second is if we take a look at the 30-minute time frame charts, if you take a look at the ES Mini and the Adal, that's upper left and lower left. I'll just take a look at the ES Mini. We'll expand this out. This has a confirmed Roach momentum indicator bottom pattern. The level to be watching here, if there's going to be any kind of uh, significant move to the upside, 
is uh, closed about 38, 32 and a quarter. That's the top of its new profile. That's the one that formed as we came on the air at one o'clock. If price is able to close above that, that could be a signal of a move, further move higher out there. In the case of the Dow, the level to be watching here would be the 31, 142 area out there. As far as where resistance is at for the Russell on a 30 minute basis and for the NQ, it's 11,730 for the NQ and it's 1729 for the Russell. Now, we're going to switch charts out here. We're going to go to uh, the black background screen. So we're going to take a look at two different charts out here. Another number to be paying attention to is the spot volatility index. If the spot volatility index closes back below its 50-day exponents moving average, that's 2802. It's trading at 2849. That'll put the uh, wind at the back of the buyers out there. If it doesn't, then the wind is at the back of the sellers. The reason to believe that that is a potential possibility out here, potential possibility, you got to love it, is because we still have positive market breadth for the daily time frame for the S&P 500. What that means is there are more instruments, 161, trading above the top of their daily profile versus 109 trading below the bottom of the daily profile for the S&P 500. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for listening in. Have a wonderful Wednesday, folks, and stay tuned. Two more great hours are up next. you got your favorite polar bear, David White. After that, Tom O'Brien, he'll take us on home. And I'll be back with you tomorrow on Terrific Thursday. Please have a wonderful Wednesday. Take care, folks.